We are 22 Us Radio. 22 Us Radio is 22usmedia.com and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3 Long Beach, Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and now our world broadcasting tag team champions of the world and a cruiserweight champion. Hi, I'm Ethan. I'm James. I'm Rob. And this is episode 180 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. You can find us on Twitter at RealBTR Radio. Find me individually at Ethan I mean, 85 You can follow James at at JHW Reporter. And you can follow Rob at Rob Flores Media. And don't forget the R Truth DMs for Ethan. And uh, what a busy weekend it has been. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, the Royal Rumble kicked off this past weekend. Um, I mean, it was uh, arguably one of the uh, most anticipated premium live events that we've had in recent memory. And uh, a lot of people uh, didn't really care for it. Uh, felt like it under-delivered. Um, I thought it was all right, I guess, James. I thought it, no, I thought it went, I thought it went well. I don't know. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't what it could have been. But I didn't think it was bad. It did. It did what it needed to do. It, mm-hmm. Like it wasn't. It was closer to underwhelming than overwhelming. Yes. But it wasn't bad. I give it like a C plus or yeah, C plus probably. So so I got a pass. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's passing. Yeah. All right. Um, let's get right into it. Let's kick it off with, of course acknowledging the tribal chief throw up those ones he came out first kicked off the main it started off with the main event as i tweeted over on the twitter he said started off with the main it's not the main event it's not last any match with roman reigns is the main event sir um, um no because the name of the show is called royal rumble and that was the main event the royal rumble debatable Anyways, uh, I mean, it, it basically <laughs> went it, it went downhill after after the main event. Honestly, anyways, um, Seth Rollins with probably the pop of the night coming out in the Shield gear and theme song, uh, getting into the head of Roman Reigns. Uh, this was a fun match. Uh, we got to see a Shield bomb through a table from Seth Rollins, uh, curb stomp, uh, the buckle bomb. You know, classic Seth Rollins stuff. Ultimately, uh, you know, he teased trying to get Roman to do the fist, the shield fist. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got put to sleep. Um, nice little segment at the end with him uh, grabbing the rope. The referee kind of dropped his hand on the rope. Yeah. Um, and Roman didn't let go. He said he wouldn't allow, uh, Seth wouldn't allow him to let go. So. Yeah. Roman Reigns lost by disqualification. Yeah. It's kind of a weird finish. I, you know, I, I don't know if I popped, but it was pretty. It was like it was a, the whole uh, reaching for the rope thing, and then he, you know, he looks out. Of, he is out of it, mm-hmm. and the ref goes and drops his hand, and <laughs> a miracle, it lands on the rope. Um, so you think, okay, we're gonna move on to whatever's next here, right? And he just decides not to let go. And it's like, oh, okay. And it was a little, it's a little weird, uh, especially because of what we'll see later on. And we'll get to, I'll explain that when we get to that. But I just thought things didn't add up for your chief. Um, I like this finish. You do. If it, if I it mean, continues, it? if it continues, now it seems right, right now they may have paused whatever they're doing, but. Obviously, I think they're going to go back around to it at some point. Um, I, like, like time has like next month, WrestleMania. It they might wait until after. I mean, it's always going to be ongoing with Roman and Seth mm-hmm. just because of their history. Like that, it's never going away, right? But they've got, they've got that story there now that you know Seth technically did win the match, and well, there no, can always be gonna, a rematch. I think it's going to interesting because. And Seth kind of said it, I think, what, the week before the match, 
or earlier in the week or whatever, mm-hmm. that Roman's never beat Seth? Not for the championship. Not in a championship match. Not for the championship, yeah. And it still technically so, stands. So I think that's interesting. And I think, so. like, the only other person who kind of can have that kind of claim on someone is, like, I think Hogan's never beat Piper or something like that, or never pinned Piper. So there's something along those lines. Like, I think Hogan's never got the best of Piper. Maybe it's always been a DQ or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's just for WWE. I don't know if that, that may have changed, but I don't even think it changed so much when they got to WCW. Mm-hmm. But there's not a whole lot of people where someone who, even though they're booked strongly as a, a Roman Reigns or a Hulk Hogan, that you can um, – you, you don't have that many guys or it can go very almost, you know, undetected until it's pointed out like, uh, yeah, like Roddy Hogan never got the best of Roddy considering how many times Hogan got the best of everybody. And so far that seems to be the case with uh, both Seth and Roman here. But I think, so from that standpoint, maybe I, I am kind of okay with it just because it kind of keeps that going a little bit where, where Roman can't overcome Seth. And maybe that leads to something where maybe that does happen, but yeah, I think it's good. Uh, we all predicted Roman Reigns was retaining here. Technically, he didn't retain, but he lost the match. So, technically, technically, we all got this one off <laughs> wrong. Do we get half a point? Uh, no, I don't know. No, 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 I don't think no, we can. No. Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, next up, we had the women's Royal Rumble match. Um, I would say the better of the two Rumble matches. I think going- was the women's one. Mm-hmm. I think most yeah, people where I saw I saw on social media I think said this one kind of made a little more sense, but it both fell flat for several people. Apparently, uh, we had certain bookers, which we'll, t- we'll talk about <laughs> for for at least the men's and, uh, match. So we'll, we'll mm-hmm. see how that works out. Um, we had predictions. Uh, these were the predictions here for the first and second entrance. Uh, I had Rhea Ripley and Italia, both wrong. Uh, James had Rhea Ripley and Nikki ASN each, uh, both wrong. And uh, for Rob, I had Natalia and did not have a second, but uh, they were <laughs> was wrong. <laughs> Rob, you and your predictions. I don't know why. Just follow the format, Rob. I give you the... <laughs> The whole thing just copy and paste. Okay, for those who don't know, right? So Ethan is a very nice gentleman who goes about and, and, and lays it out in a very organized way with who what championships on the line, who's in the match. And and I followed it. It was no problem. Rob booked the territory with <laughs> with a page long essay. But looking six months ahead. Long term <laughs> All right. Yes, he uh, would, but we got most of his picks in there, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I, I think you did have Ivory at some point. I just didn't put it on the on the tweet for surprise guests. So let's go through the list here. Who? Uh, yeah. I, wait a minute. For who? For who? Uh, for a surprise? Uh, who? Who? Who did you say for me? No, oh, for J. Uh, Rob. You cheated me at a one. Did I? I told you to put it, and you didn't put it. Oh, uh, I, I forgot who it was. The but. winner. Was it the winner? I think I put her there. No, I forgot who it was. I just knew I needed to yell, yell at you about something you didn't put for me. But mm. Oh. He said, um, no, I said, I, oh. I put her there. I put a surprise. One of the surprises you got, right? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go through now. the match. We'll go through the yeah, match here. Yeah. I didn't uh, want to yell at you. I, I knew I had to yell at you about something. So. I'm sure you, you always find a reason to. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, first entrance uh, Sasha Banks making her return, um, coming out in a Sailor Moon outfit. It was trending on Twitter for like um, like a day and a half, and, and I noticed it right away. Uh, mm-hmm. I grew up on Sailor Moon. Don't remember anything about it, but I remember I used to watch it all the time when I was younger. Maybe not all the time, but I do remember watching it. But um, were you surprised that she came out number one? After hearing that she was still sort of injured, I guess not. Oh, I didn't hear that. I but, think, yeah, that's why also she didn't. But she was in for a good amount, though. She didn't last that long. 
Like she wasn't. I think most people probably expected her to be there for most of it. That didn't happen. Like she she should have maybe been in the final ten, and she definitely wasn't in the final ten. She definitely wasn't. Um, So I actually have the three three women who do who did last uh, the longest, which we'll get to. Uh, Next up, we have Melina, Mm -hmm. who was a surprise entrant. Came out with paparazzi and all. Okay, real quick. (laughs) Real quick, before so Melina had been on Raws before, but she had never competed, right? Is that what it is? I believe so, yeah. Okay, because it was kind of a surprise, but I'm like, we've seen her before, but it was just she hasn't competed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, uh, she was quickly eliminated by Sasha Banks. One thing about this match, uh, oh, Legends, pretty quickly, too. Legends were pretty much eliminated within seconds of their match. Except for uh, Lita? Lita was an exception. Uh, yeah. Michelle McCool. Uh, good old, our favorite. We'll talk about her in a bit. There was a couple of them that lasted, but mm-hmm. most of them were out within a minute or less. Yeah, my house probably almost set a record, I think. Uh, next up, we had Tamina. Uh, then mm-hmm. Kelly Kelly, who was announced. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was quickly eliminated. Landed face first. <laughs> what a <laughs> spot I saw, I saw that and I was like she just felt flat. I was like go ahead Kelly Kelly I mean and I'll give her credit because it's like if that's intended if like oh this is how you're getting eliminated like you gotta be brave to do that and, and, there, and there's no uh, really protecting yourself on that no. <laughs> too much I'll give her credit uh, we had Aaliyah who was in there for a little bit i think 20 minutes or something bit. not bad i thought yeah i thought she maybe would have i don't know she, it was kind of almost like you've got better after a while but mm-hmm. uh next up we had Liv morgan who was i believe my favorite twins uh i think i had her in there too a top four or i think that's what i had i think i lied i, I didn't th- even have her in the final four <laughs> did i have her in the final four or was i supposed to or there was something i you think did. about you, her you had her in the yeah. final four there so there you go. Uh, Queen Zelina came mm-hmm. out. Uh, Bianca Belair. Then we had uh, Dana Brooke, 24 7 champion Dana Brooke. Mm-hmm. Michelle McCool, my personal mm-hmm. favorite, Sonya Deville. You know, came out in her suit, sat on commentary for a bit. You know, she was being professional, unbiased. Okay. Go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish, and then we're gonna we gotta we gotta break this down a little bit. Some fans weren't very happy about this. Um, that that's all I got for that one. But we had Natalia. No, go. Yeah, okay, go on. continue. Mm-hmm. Natalia. Uh, then we had Cameron. Cameron made her return, Funkadactyl. Yes. Um, and then we had a uh, <laughs> Sonya Deville took off the jacket and uh, took her out of the match with again under a minute. Now people were upset about this because one i guess it was like why would you bring her back and and like i don't know like for like for me it made sense i mean mm-hmm. one yeah you brought her back and then two i think i started tweeting don't tell because she looked kind of good when she was like when she kind of mm-hmm. got in there for a minute and i'm like don't tell me she's gonna work her way back on the roster which i'm not against i'm just i just mm-hmm. kind of was surprised but um yeah then she gets thrown out and then i'm like and then it dawned on me after she threw her out because I'm like, why is she getting in now? This makes no sense. And then after I realized, I'm like, oh, she was Naomi's partner. Mm-hmm. Watch Naomi come out next. And so, mm-hmm. of course, that Naomi appears came out next. to be the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, she eliminated Sonia uh, within seconds as well. Uh, Carmella came out. Rhea Ripley mm-hmm. at number 16. Charlotte Flair at number 17. Uh, Ivory came out. Um, one of my favorite Terrible. moments came out as a uh, right to censor. I right agree. Yeah. Kind of promo the entire mm-hmm. time, even when she was getting eliminated. She was talking the whole time, even as she fell or was eliminated. She is sixty she years old like too. You. <laughs> She's what? Sixty years old. Is she really? Yeah, she, she just turned sixty. She, mm-hmm. she looks just like she did back in the day, as far as I'm concerned. And that's right. I guess that makes sense because wasn't she part of the original? That's right. The original wow. Glow. Glow, sorry. Glow mm-hmm. in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, next up, we had Brie Bella, everyone's favorite wrestler, mm. stealing her husband's a gimmick. Uh, then we had. She probably had the pop of the night, no? 
she had one of them probably yeah the bella twins are yeah. pretty popular amongst especially no, the women nope no, i did not say the bellas it's oh, brie brie don't try and both, lump both of them i think both of them got pretty or what i don't know <laughs> i don't think so but the whole yes thing i think got a pretty significant pop yes uh next up we had everyone's favorite i brought up my trash bag uh, and then I s- sang along with this "Singing with Me, James." I thought she was in earlier. Oh, hardcore country, come on! Hardcore <laughs> country. <laughs> oh, everyone popped on Twitter. Everyone, she had the loudest pop on social media. Yeah, I'm. Hey, she. You know, she got what you know she asked for. She wanted to get in there. She wanted came to came out, came out with the championship. Champion. She was mm-hmm. throwing that thing in the air. People were into. Mm-hmm. People love the song. I'm right. Bring her back. And what, just, just and what back. happened as a result? She got kicked in the face before she got in the ring by Michelle McCool. Did she really? Yeah. Before she got in the ring? Yeah. Like she got on the apron and then I she, think it was Michelle cheating. kicked her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but what happened as a result of her being um, in the match? She got a nice little ovation and then she got eliminated by legend Lita. But what, does, but what did the impact have for impact of her being there? It brought the ratings up, sir. Yes, you have the number, did. right? You got the numbers? I, up? I, I do. I mean, I silly me for not? referencing it and not even being ready. <laughs> um, yeah, no, she did. That was the highest number for impact uh, for the year. And so she... W- <laughs> Says WWE nearly doubled their viewership. I guess you can say to some degree they did, but um, 182,000 for the last episode of Impact. And mm-hmm. again, uh, I, I, how many, I don't know how much time we have left on this segment here, but just real quick. Got about a minute. Um, okay, so I'll take up the whole minute. No. Um, so, but no, but I think, you know, it's supposed to be this thing where WWE might be finding other places or other companies to work with, and you're seeing someone like an Impact being able to benefit from this and remember. AEW has had some shows with impact. Did they not, were they not able to help draw the same number the way that the Royal Rumble did with Mickey in one appearance? Kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So it's something to consider going forward. Uh, number 21 had surprise entrant Alicia Fox. Mickey ASH followed. WWE legend Summer Rae followed. And we're going to cut that off here. When we return, we'll finish up the Women's Rumble. Right Gotta here. finish up the WWE legend. <laughs> right here on the Rose. We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 80.1 FM KKJZ HD3 Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 180 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. I'm your host, Ethan Jordan, alongside the analyst, James Williams, and producer, Rob Flores. We're talking about the Women's Royal Rumble match. Uh, left it off with WWE legend Summer Rae. And we get uh, perhaps... Oh, some... and real quick, real quick on Summer Rae. What a, what a potty mouth as she, as she made her way down the ring, sprinting at full speed. I thought she was kind of directing it. And maybe I like to think to some degree she was because I know a lot of people gave her a hard time uh, because what the SmackDown before or whatever, she was introduced as WWE legend. Mm-hmm. Um Summer Ray, which could have been directed at, at you know, all the naysayers on, on Twitter, but apparently they were directed at Natalia, who, who was yeah, who was in the middle of the ring waiting for her, and uh, and of course they find a way to uh, mess up um, any sort of a significant run by Natalia there in the Royal Rumble. Very disappointing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I say, mm. mm-hmm. give Natalia her flowers for once. Uh, next up, we get Nikki Bella, everyone's favorite. No. Not everyone. I don't I, know. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. She looked kind of great. Like she, she showed some power and some stuff. Mm-hmm. She looked kind of good out there. But they next up, next up, number twenty-five. We had Ray Wyatt. I mean Sarah Logan. What? <laughs> there was a picture that said uh, Ray Wyatt is back, and it was her I picture. I missed that. I didn't even. It was, see it was her. her. Because she kind of has the dread, like kind of looks like, like a little bit. 
I trying to see that with with okay. I thought you just messed up. I was like, oh okay. No. <laughs> uh, next up we had WWE Hall of Famer Lita. Mm-hmm. Look great. Uh, we had twenty seven at uh, Molly Holly, Mighty Molly, who was quickly attacked by a real superhero, Nikki A. Saint. Yes. <laughs> and eliminated. Uh, number. I was very confused about that. Why? Because I thought Nikki A.S.H. is supposed to be the good one. Because then her and... She is a good one. According she snapped. To her. According to her. Okay, I was like, yeah, she's, there's no way. But I don't know why they turned it so turned her uh, heel so quick, I guess. And I thought Rhea... Was she feuding with Rhea Ripley? Didn't they just kind of end or something? Or yeah, did the feud that? Rhea Ripley pinned her on Raw this past week. Oh, okay, so that maybe is more to why she snapped. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 28, Ronda Rousey made her return. That was your uh, surprise pick here. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. 29, Shotzi. And 30, Shayna yeah. Baszler. No Bailey, no Asuka, no Alexa. Yeah, um, that's right. I'm, and I forgot to mention that. that there, I think, I, I don't know if I told you that, but yeah, I realized like way after that Bailey wasn't in it. I remember people were, the uh, Asuka was trending. Mm-hmm. Um, Alexa, Bl- I, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with Alexa Bliss not being in that. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but Bailey did tweet a picture. I think she's still not 100. percent So she was chilling on the couch along with Trish Stratus, who also took a picture chilling on the couch. Same exact photo. Okay. There you go. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, that was a rumble. Ronda Rousey looked a little slow to me. To be fair, she just had a child. So, but is that her? For is that maybe her first rumble though? Yes. There's a lot that goes on with the rumble and trying to remember the spots. There was a mess. So. There was a mess. Too. I'll give her some credit. I mean, just in ju- just the Royal Rumble is a mess anyway. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, but so I'll give her some credit on that. I won't, we'll, we'll see how she is later on when of course they're calling her slow and stuff. But mm-hmm. um, I don't know if it was a complete surprise that she showed up, right? I think a lot mm-hmm. of people kind of had it. I wasn't there. expecting it. I don't know. I mean, I guess the internet knew. But yeah, I didn't you, really you see didn't pay anything. attention to it? No. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I didn't see it until like the day of, maybe. And I was okay, like, okay it, maybe. But it was kind of a thing that was out there, but it was nothing really set, uh, I think. Yeah. But it was kind of out there for a day or two. Uh, Natalia lasted 36 minutes, 17 seconds. Liv Morgan, see, there you go. 37 minutes, 20 seconds. Wait, okay. So Natalia beat Liv? No. She's third. third. Liv was 37 20. Who did I have in my longest? Uh, you had for your longest Liv Morgan, so she was close because she was. And I thought first. I won. No, Bianca Belair, your favorite, who you went against here for the third year in a row. No, 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 no. don't. Third don't year in a row that. is the Iron Woman. Actually, uh, she was in. Forty-seven minutes, thirty seconds. I didn't realize she was in that long. She was in that long. She's the Iron Woman. Did. Um, I had Charlotte, you had Liv, uh, Rob had Natalia. So you guys both got two and three at least. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. Final four. I had Bailey, Oscar, Bianca, and Charlotte. I had Charlotte and Bianca. I had two, two of the four. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had Bailey, Liv, Bianca, and Charlotte. You had also two of the four. Bianca and Liv, yeah. And then uh, Rob had Bailey, Sasha, Lita, and Natalia. Uh, I don't think any of them were in the four. So, but I don't uh, even remember how Belair got thrown out. Charlotte, she was eliminated with. Wasn't she number four? She was Belair number three or four. Three. Like it was final. her. Belair. Like, yeah, final. She was three because someone else was there. I think it was Ripley. Maybe yeah. Because yeah, Ripley. Could be wrong. Um, anyways, uh, since we're short on time, gonna fast forward a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. We have uh, after the match, we had Dewdrop versus Be- uh, Becky Lynch for the World Women's mm. Championship. Kind of skipped over this one, uh, honestly. I thought it, it from the what I saw, I thought it was fine, but I think most people thought this is probably the weakest match of the night. Really? Um, yeah. So I didn't really see a whole lot of it. Um, but uh, Becky retained, and I think, which I think I mean, everybody knew was going to happen. 
So. You had a you had do drop on this one, sir. You stuck with her. I was, yeah, I was trying. You know, I got I was trying to go against what everyone. Else. Yeah, but people were, what, people were giving me a hard time on Twitter about. It. I saw that. <laughs> I'm like whatever, and I'm I mean yeah. So I, and I thought about maybe changing it for a second, but I'm like no, because what if she does win? Well, maybe maybe soon. Uh, next up, we had WWE Championship match: Brock Lesnar defending against Bobby Lashley. Uh, this was a, a decent effort. I mean, we saw Lashley hit some suplexes on Lesnar, vice versa. Um, as Lesnar was going to hit an F5, he hit it, hit the referee along mm-hmm. the process, and then throw it up. Throw up those no, ones. it didn't make any sense. The tribal it made chief, sense, but it didn't the tribal sense. chief, and then spearing Lesnar out of his boots, and then welcome. I mean, come on now. Welcome back to the family. There he is. Bloodline. Mm, See him? Mm-hmm. Yep. Hands Roman the title. Ends up hitting him with the championship. Lashley. You should, you should thank, thank Reigns for Lashley's new title reign. Bro, look, Bobby could have done it all by himself. By the way, by the way I predicted this right. Along with Rob. But I called this. I, I, say, I said, said last week this was going to happen. I mean, yeah, it was obvious. Was it? But yeah, I picked Brock, no? You did pick Brock. <laughs> okay, how much time do I have? Because I got a few points to make. I mean, yeah. I got nine minutes. To, I ain't we're going to have to rush it, but yeah, go ahead. I'm not rushing nothing. Just wait. We got other stories um, to talk. Okay, wait. Real quick, real quick. It didn't make the Roman thing, Reigns thing didn't make sense because Roman Reigns ended ended his match losing his mind, right? Oh, got some heat. Stagum, got some heat. Yada yada yada, right? Had some unfinished business. Yeah, but but I just don't understand how you're losing your mind and you someone's telling you to do this or that, whatever his problem was that kept him from that got him DQ, and then all of a sudden he seems perfectly fine coming out in the Bobby Lashley Brock Lesnar match. And knowing what he had to do was in full control of himself. Well, we forgot to mention there was an attack after the match for on Rollins, similar to when Rollins betrayed yeah. the Shield members. He mm-hmm. let it all out. He, he, he let out all the anger already. He was able to compose himself after the fact. Okay. So that point, I guess, could be made. I'm okay mm-hmm. with that. Then he had to okay. go take care of some other business. It's just a little weird. It was, if it was on two, two different shows, sure. But it was just a little weird to me. But anyways, the other point. I was surprised that they had Brock Lesnar lose. And the reason why I went with Brock is because Brock was a good old country boy baby face, right? Mm-hmm. Flip phone and everything, right? Mm-hmm. You, you're buying into him. Mm-hmm. But I think they got the booking a little messed up here. We'll talk about it a little bit later, about, about more about Brock Lesnar. But wasn't a fan of how they have him looking coming out of out of the Royal Rumble. Uh, let's talk about uh, the Grit Couple versus the Egg Couple. Fun little match, I thought. Edge and Beth. Cool. I mean, mm-hmm. Beth was, uh, as Rob said in the chat, paying homage to uh, Luna Vachon with her look. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. They got the victory with the double grand slam. The... James and I predicted correctly. Rob picked the couple who lost, unfortunately. They look great, though. Great, great, best outfits of the night. So that's all that matters, right? Better than, better than, well, go ahead and say it. Seth was doing the throwback, so he really didn't have any outfit or anything. Better than Seth Rollins. Anyways, moving on to <laughs> the, main, <laughs> the other. Technically, this should have been on a kickoff show. Um, the Royal Rumble match, the men's Royal Rumble match. <laughs> Most people felt that. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through the names and then we'll quickly discuss it so we finish it up in the segment here. Um, number one, AJ Styles came out posing like Shawn Michaels, but did not go the distance. You don't pose like Shawn Michaels and don't go the distance. That's, <laughs> right. Uh, next up we have Shinsuke Nakamura who I predicted would be one of the two entrants so I get a point there 
Number three, Austin Theory. Four, Robert Roode, who had a nice little moment with AJ Styles. There was some TNA chance as well. Number five, Ridge Holland. Six, Montez Ford. Seven, Damian Priest. Eight, Sami Zayn. Number nine, Johnny Knoxville, who got destroyed by AJ Styles. Uh, got a frog splash from Montez and then a haluva kick to be eliminated by Sami Zayn. Uh, number 10, Angelo Dawkins. 11, Omas. 12, Ricochet. 13, Chad Gable. 14, Dominic. That was great. He, he's been great. He's been doing great work. Uh, 14, Dominic Mysterio. Rob's favorite. 15, Rob, geez. Sorry, Rob. You Why did you... <laughs> yeah, no, no one, no one sees the text thread that we have. I wasn't having it. Fifteen, Happy Corbin. <laughs> you need to take some tips from Happy Corbin, Rob. Uh, Sixteen, Dolph Ziggler, who mm-hmm. made history. Uh, Fifteen, Royal Rumbles, uh, only second behind Kane. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seventeen, Sheamus. Eighteen, Rick Boogs. Nineteen, Mad Cat Moss. Twenty, Riddle. Twenty-one, Drew McIntyre, who made a kind of surprise return, uh, getting some payback. On Corbin mm-hmm. and Moss. 22, Kevin Owens. 23, Ray Mysterio. 24, Co- Kofi Kingston, who fortunately this did not go as planned, uh, got eliminated really quickly. I wasn't able to save himself this time around. Uh, he made a nice long Instagram post. Yeah. So, yeah, he did. You know, he was humble about it. And you can't get them all. Like, he got, I feel like he's gotten so many of them in a row, right? And, and some of them have been fail. a lot. A lot of them are right. So it's kind of like he, he's not a bummer. He's not washed up now because he missed one. Mm-hmm. I mean, he took a barricade to the chest. It was I would have been, bad. I would have been <laughs> retired if that, that was me. So I'll give him credit, you know? Number 25, Otis. 26, Big E. 27, Russellwanian legend, Bad Bunny. 28, the best in the world made his comeback for one night only, apparently. That's a little teaser there. Shane McMahon. Mm-hmm. 29, mm-hmm. Randy Orton in his hometown of St. Louis. And 30, Brock Lesnar. He uh, hit an F5 on the bunny. He uh, face-to-face with McIntyre, the final two. And uh, got that revenge on McIntyre there. A little storytelling there. But that's all the story we really got from this rumble. <laughs> no, but, okay, a few things. One, of that Bad Bunny looked good. A lot of people wanted to knock Bad Bunny and say, oh, he shouldn't have been there. I think he threw out Kevin Owens. Um, threw out like, like two that. people, I think. He threw out like two or three people. I thought it looked good. He, you know, to me, I think, he, yeah, he, he did another Canadian Destroyer, which I thought was super impressive. And, you know, I thought he fit in in the Rumble here. You know, it, it, was, it was honestly maybe the only surprise uh, in the whole match for me. There, mm. there was no NXT. There was no L A. Throw out Sheamus. Say with me. L A. No, there's no NXT anywhere. There was no NXT anywhere. There was no no Roddy, no nobody. So it was a little weird. But then you also had um, the, you know, yeah, I thought it made sense when you have Randy come in there yeah. as the hometown boy. You get him there at the end and a big, a decent pop for him. And you think maybe he has a, ch- a shot. And I thought this is where the booking was bad. Was Why great- do you have, you have Brock come in and you have him throw out Randy Orton. That's, I mean, I get it, it's a rumble, but you make him, you're making Brock look like the bad guy. You're making Brock look like Brock from every other year except for this year. I'm not going to cheer for that, Brock. I want flip phone, Brock, flip phone Brock or nothing. You can, you can think uh, the best in the world, Shane McMahon, apparently. Yeah. Well, so apparently, yeah. he booked himself to uh, around too this rumble. <laughs> He booked himself too strong. The Rumble was booked around his his return, apparently. Apparently he got a lot of heat. And apparently he was supposed to be a a WrestleMania competitor this year. Uh, That was until apparently yesterday. when uh, I guess we... He's no longer with the company. Uh, I don't... Yeah. He wasn't contracted, I don't think. I, I mean, how's he not contracted if, if, if he's the one who booked the Rumble? Well, I mean, he works as like, you know, a backstage whatever, but he's not yeah. a, like an on-screen talent. Apparently, 
someone said he's been removed. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, they said he got released or whatever. I think we need to talk a little bit more about this in the next mm-hmm. segment. Next thing we'll talk about it. Uh, when we return, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about another recently released star who uh, thought he was going to start out fresh somewhere else. Looks like he's not getting a start anywhere. <laughs> Maybe he should have just booking your- he should have just stayed where he was at. Talking about booking yourself too strong and, and uh, not getting the payoff you wanted, right? We'll talk about that and all and much more right here. <laughs> on the Outdoor Pros. We are 22 Us Radio. 22 Us Radio is 22 Us Media.com and 88.1 FM, KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 180 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. I'm your host, Ethan Jordan, alongside the analyst, James Williams, and producer, Rob Flores. Uh, Shane McMahon just talked about his big comeback. Um, let's just discuss. Uh, did you want to talk about more like his departure and everything? Because he, yeah. he, he was apparently supposed to be competing at WrestleMania this year. Which I'm fine with him not being a part of. Because it's like. No, he's not. So, yeah. Like, but do we need Shane McMahon every year? Like, for what? Like, no, he was there last year as well. That's right. I guess he's there every year. He's been <laughs> there like every year. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do who is he gonna go up against? Like what storyline does he have? What storyline are they gonna make that I'm gonna be so interested? It would have made in sense so- with uh, Austin Theory. Sure, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. Apparently, but- there's a report that he was supposed to be Seth Rollins. <laughs> yeah, see, that that does nothing for me. Mm. Um, the thing is too, make sure. I mean, if if that's all it took to get him let go or or no longer part of the company, uh, you know, people are starting to say, "What's gonna happen with Triple H?" Like Triple H is being out there. I'm not. They were just on Twitter. I was catching some of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, if Shane can go, nobody's safe. That means Roman's not safe. That means uh, Steph's not safe. <laughs> like they were saying, man, be on? careful, Steph. Yeah, I don't know. They're gonna. Yeah, they're like, selling. It's, they're selling the company. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, but if you are like, you know, I know this guy Nick Khan. Is it Nick Khan? Mm-hmm. We well, we didn't talk about. I don't know if we did. There was a deal with Disney for their Indonesia, Indonesia one. Yeah. So there is. Mm. I mean, that's something there, and it's I know it's not much, but you know, WWE is trying to distribute their network everywhere, so different companies mm-hmm. are t- taking claim. We got Fox running SmackDown. We got USA running. Uh, Pete, the the network here in the states, as well as mm-hmm. USA, we've now got Disney in Indonesia, apparently. And I think you said there was one even last week, right? Um, there might have been something else in the UK that I think they're looking was, at. Yeah. So Maybe. it's very. I know they've got a deal somewhere in Canada. I don't mm-hmm. think it's a network; it's something else. But you know, so they're looking to get as much money as possible here. I just think it's crazy, but. Yeah, but again, when when your final four includes Shane, like, who were the final four? Was it Randy? Was probably five, I think. It was but Brock the final four McIntyre, was like, Bad Bunny, and Shane McMahon. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I think and it's happened. like, and it's just kind of like, it is a little, you know, because there's no like. I don't know. It's not in like you know it's coming down to those two. And yeah, there was a little bit of storytelling there, like you said, with with McIntyre and Brock, and kind of like Brock, um, you know, McIntyre giving that return uh, to Brock after Brock giving him, um, you know, the rub and giving him that WrestleMania moment or whatever it was. So, you know, that's cool. But I think that was probably the most underwhelming part of the whole thing was that final four finish. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about uh, Brian Kendrick really quick because mm-hmm. uh, we do have some elimination chamber to discuss some some stuff to discuss there uh, Brian Kendrick uh, who recently asked for his release apparently like six weeks ago uh, the last time we saw him was getting thrown up down the stairs by Harlan <laughs> well, that's what that was in that video you showed yes me? he just I tweeted that him. he tweeted that again <laughs> right now <laughs> um, didn't even recognize him when he took that bump. 
He apparently got his release. He got his release over the weekend. And uh, there were apparently plans to make him have him debut against John Moxley on this tonight's episode of Dynamite. Well, earlier today, some, I guess, past interview resurfaced, which mm-hmm. ultimately caused uh, Tony Khan to pull Brian Kendrick from the show. And I don't think we're going to be seeing a Brian Kendrick on camera anytime soon. He, Not has, apologized. Yeah. he has apologized to on Twitter. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's crazy, you know. You think you're gonna go wrestle in a different company? You got your release. You're been waiting a couple months for, and then this comes up. I don't know where this came from, but it came back up, and then mm. now, uh, now you're back to square one again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you know, who just say if you don't get released, none of this comes back up or whatever. I don't know, but. Yeah, not a good look for uh, for Mr. Kendrick there, and maybe the end of him, but end of his career. But yeah, it, don't don't book yourself too strong. Say that you want to get let go so you can do what you were looking like you're gonna do, mm-hmm. and pop up on AEW, and then uh, that happens. But but the thing is too, the thing I take away from that too is like AEW was just gonna like he just got released, and you're gonna put him on TV already, mm-hmm. like and That's against Moxley, do. why? That's what they but do. Why? I feel like they don't do it that quick, though. They've done it. Which one? Quickly. What has been quicker? I'll, I'll say the yeah. Kendrick one's probably the quickest, but probably the quickest. I mean, don't get yeah, you're right, but the Kendrick one is the quickest, and it's kind of like really, I don't know. Um, but what, what what was this whole thing about this forbidden door thing? Didn't Rob keep talking about that? There's no forbidden door. It was close. It was a they, they, Mickey James slipped through. And Mickey window. James was the door. She got through the window there, and then they shut the window as soon as she was throwing out the rumble. Okay, <laughs> that was it, huh? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's that's how you got. We didn't get no Brian Breaker in the Royal Rumble. We didn't get no any. Say with me, James. L A night. We didn't get him on NXT though. I think. Or wait, believe, where was he? Yeah, he was on NXT. He got a nice promo. There's a Twitter promo yeah. you can watch there. I think he, I think he was on NXT. But uh, we, got, we got NXT vengeance today, vengeance day coming up, so we'll probably talk about that when that comes up very mm-hmm. soon. Uh, let's talk about Elimination Chamber real quick, taking place mm-hmm. in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, WWE Champion Bobby Lashley will defend the title inside the chamber against five other men. The first, the first man. Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Did he have to have a match or no? No. Technically, this counts as a rematch, I guess. I don't know. He wanted a rematch against Lashley on Raw. Was in his gear. Didn't get it. Adam Pierce put him in the match. So Brock's probably going to win that title back. <laughs> yeah, but if you do that, then... They've teased yeah, champion versus yeah. champion already with Brock and Roman. Yeah, they can't do that. I know. You literally cannot have that match. Like, you cannot set that as the match. Like, it cannot be champion on champion. Because gonna, someone has to win. And le- are they going to unify the title? They might end a brand split. Yeah, they might as well. <laughs> <laughs> they're um, so thin at some spot. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why Brock would be in the match and not win at this point. Unless Roman yeah. costs him the match again. You never know. Uh, Brock also did declare that he was coming after uh, Roman Reigns. That that match is official. They're already having a match. At WrestleMania. It's when? At WrestleMania. What? It's he won the Rumble. Oh, he he won. declared. Because he yeah. won the Rumble. Okay. So, but now he wants. So we're really getting Brock and Roman again. Mm-hmm. That's happening at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yay. Um, we got Seth Rollins, who didn't have to qualify because he technically did beat Roman Reigns. He is in the elimination chamber match. I think he might win that title. If anyone's going to win it, it might be him. I'd be okay with that. That's fine. Um, Austin Theory defeated Kevin Owens to qualify. Riddle defeated Owen, uh, Otis, not Owens, Otis to qualify. Mm-hmm. 
uh, he, even though he lost the scooter race. He <laughs> lost the scooter race. That's right. I saw that. Very unfortunate. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Chad Gable gets the best of the scooter race. Uh, he was very much. He's very much like Kurt Angle. <laughs> People have been saying, just reminding, reminding everyone yeah. of Kurt Angle. Uh, apparently, Kurt Angle uh, has been asked to come back for an on-screen role. We could see him with Alpha Academy. I don't know. Maybe, sure, that's fine. Uh, I thought maybe Kurt would be someone we would have saw in the Rumble. Yeah, his wife was there. Was she? I believe he was oh, okay. in there. Uh, I think he was there. In, in... What happened? I think Orton's wife and yeah, their wives. Like mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, who else qualified for that? Matt AJ Styles defeated Rey Mysterio in a nice match. Mm-hmm. So we got uh, Lashley, Lesnar, Styles, Riddle, Rollins, and Theory inside the Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. Should be a fun match. Nice to see Austin Theory get in the match. He's uh, he's getting that rub. Who's he going to face a Mania? Because he's going to have a match of Mania. Uh, hmm. Not Mansoor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, so I don't know. I think he'll have a significant match. or Kevin Owens or somebody, maybe. I don't know. I think it goes over on somebody. Yeah, probably. Um, all right. I mean, let's see. Ric Flair. I got some numbers. So that's some numbers before we get to Ric Flair. Um, Go ahead. You know, we they obviously they set these matches and, and with the with the scooter race. I'm sure if you want to talk about needle movers, sign me up for the scooter race. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, um, coming in short, coming in short as the uh, lowest rated show of the week was the January 28th show of Rampage with uh, just over um, 600,000. Uh, AAW Dynamite, which was January 26th, was 1.1 million. And then NXT, just above Rampage, uh, with 619,000 for February 1st. Uh, Raw on January 31st, that came in at 1.8, almost 1.9 million. And then SmackDown uh, for that January 28th episode, uh, leading the way for all wrestling shows with 2.2 million and yes go ahead and give all your little credit to roman reigns that number is going up we the ones mm-hmm. 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 it's not going to be a lesson anymore if they don't give him the mm-hmm. flip phone gimmick <laughs> i just want brock lesnar with the flip phone gimmick they're gonna put the title on them it don't matter if we don't have a flip phone you tell him that. I will. Okay. Um, Rick Flair. Sad news for Rick Flair. A lot of sad news for him in the last year or so. Mm-hmm. He's getting divorced again. 16-time world champion, right? And uh, what, 16-time divorcee. 16-time divorce. He's getting... Yeah, I don't know if Rob Spinks on the Space Mountain, but they got to close that thing down. I think it's under me. It probably, yeah, it probably needs to be shut down at this point. Yeah, close I just down. don't. I just don't know why he like stop being married. You tell him that. Man, he asked he, for his privacy else. after he tweeted someone it. Else. Did he really? <laughs> Nobody would would have known if he didn't say anything. But <laughs> yeah, just like I don't know. That's crazy. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, I'm sure he'll try and get married again. Uh, I'm sure he will. Um, let's talk about uh, Dan Housen. Oh, yes. The guy who appeared who I thought was Jeff Hardy. <laughs> uh, he had another appearance. He distracted John Moxley this week. Mm. Mm-hmm. It was what, today? During, like, mm-hmm. Today's today. right now? Yeah. Today's and who? Done. Okay, so Kendrick was out and he was supposed to fight Moxley. So who did they replace him with? I saw the name, but it was not. Wheeler, Wheeler, Yuda. He's one Something of the best like friends. He's one of the best friends with uh, Pockets. Little Dog Pockets. Okay. Orange Cassidy. The but Adam Cole career it, killer. It, it, but isn't, um, isn't Pockets, I guess, friends with this Van Housen dude? 
they're together. Yes, they're they're good guys. I don't know why they put them with Moxley. <laughs> yeah, but well, I don't know. I was thinking maybe if there's some with Wheeler and maybe not. I don't know. I don't know these things. I don't know. Um, we got CM Punk versus MJF. Apparently, Punk put him over in Chicago. That's right. I think I uh, I think I did see that. So that's something. There was like a there was like a photo or something. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you did you see your uh, Mandy Rose and Chase Brown? NXT. Kind of. By uh, was it Kaylee Ray? Again? Kaylee Ray. They're having a, a title match at Ben and Sam, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Goal leader into a title match. Man, and, I can't wait for um, Mandy, Mandy Rose to get that W. It'll be, what, her first title event? How dare you. <laughs> She's been busy. Doing what? Photo shoots. I guess. Being and, the face of NXT. Right. The, speaking of the faces of NXT, uh, Mr. Braun Breaker. Was in a tag team match there with uh, Tommaso Ciampa, what taking on Santos Escobar's boys and uh, and then Legado uh, del yeah. Fantasma, yeah, the, yeah, them. <laughs> Anyways, um, Braun and Ciampa looked pretty good. Got the win over them, and then uh, Santos comes up onto the onto the apron there, and mm-hmm. and uh, Breaker is kind of the one going almost, you know, not face to face, but kind of having a um, a verbal altercation with him more or less. And mm-hmm. Ciampa's kind of in the background and I'm thinking Ciampa is going to attack uh, Braun Breaker there and, and we're going to kind of see them continue that or start that feud back up again. But that does not appear to be the case. There was no attack from uh, Ciampa, so he kind of just lingers around in the background there. But yeah, so I guess kind of good on Ciampa there to kind of just come to the aid of uh, Braun Breaker, I think, what, a week or two before and now they had that tag team match and they appear to be on good terms, and maybe that's a passing of the torch mm-hmm. to some degree. So we'll see what happens with Ciampa. Maybe uh, that is kind of the end of him, and he'll just ride off into the sunset and and just continue his new uh, run here on um, on main event. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Again, I was kind of surprised those NXT guys were not in the Rumble at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, let's let's talk about Jeff Hardy. Uh-oh. Uh oh, what's going on with Jeff Hardy? Apparently, he was invited back to the company to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, he declined okay. and asked By for his, his results. Yeah, asked for his uh, test results back, which apparently Ooh. he cleared them. So mm-hmm. not gonna see be not gonna see Jeff Hardy back in the company anytime soon. Trying to do Jeff Hardy that quick, huh? Why do you release him and then bring him back? Makes no sense, but you're gonna put him without Matt. I mean, he's had a successful singles career. Put him in separate. Matt's a little busy being a manager over there, so. I mean, that hasn't stopped him from borrowing somebody else before. I guess not. Like from you know, I just. And if Jeff Hardy can still go, why would you put him in the? Put Christian in. What's Christian doing? Is he still on AEW or something? Yeah, he's Impact a new he's a new Marco right? stunt. He's a mascot yeah. for Jungle Express, Jurassic Express. Is he? They didn't know that. Yeah. That's what he left for, huh? Mm-hmm. All right. So we're gonna wrap it up here. Um I think we covered pretty much everything I wanted, which is good. Uh next yeah. week, next week we're talking more Elimination Chamber. It's coming up. Next big oh premium live event um but yeah until next time hopefully i mean hopefully we'll get some uh more spicy news uh we'll know ronda rousey who she's challenging uh we did get an announcement Mm. that becky lynch will face lita as well yeah in the master chamber so we'll talk more about that next week uh all that and more on next week's episode of beyond the ropes until then it has been absolutely too sweet (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.